Good afternoon, everyone. Oof. How are you, Council? If I was any better, I'd be you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to all. Same. Thank you, and same to you, Pat. I thought that was my line. Oh, sorry about that, Mayor. <laughs> Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, for you. Hi, guys. How are you? I think we have five. We have five. Is Bill O'Day in the chambers? I don't see him. Yeah. No. We have four then. He's in the building. I don't see him in the chamber. Okay. He's in the back. All right, one more. We'll take a roll call, please. He's here. Okay. Oh, we got five. Uh, and Not the main place. Guys in the chamber. <laughs> Start the meeting? Yes, please. Roll call. For Elder Cedeno? Here. Cefeli? Copas? Absent. O'Day? Here. Rodriguez? Here. Romano? Here. Torres? Here. Walker? For Elder Walker? Absent. Chairman Venieri. We have six. Please stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag. To the Republic. Which stands for the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, can we can we have a moment of silence? Former County Executive Bernard Hartnett passed away early this morning. Hmm. Uh, we did not know that. Please stand for a moment of silence, please. Um, thank you, guys. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as follows. Notice of resolution of the 2020 of the Freeholders Bulletin Board, First Board Administration Building, Annex, Jersey City, New Jersey. Copies of the Above mentioned resolution has been sent to the county clerk and the editors of the Jersey Journal and the Star Ledger. That notice was modified by the notice, which was published in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, due to the state of emergency regarding public meetings. The regular meeting of the free order schedule is December 22nd at 1 o'clock p.m. will be conducted in person and by the virtual service at the scheduled date. Excuse me, there's noise coming from the chambers. We can't hear. There will be a limit of 25 persons in the chamber. The meeting ID was published. Video functionality will only be turned on for freeholders, county officials, and staff as needed. If you are a member of the public and wish to participate in the public portions of the meeting, please use Zoom audio. And when the public portions are announced, please use the raise your hand icon. At this point, Mr. Chairman, may I have a motion to approve the following meeting, caucus meeting, November 23rd, <laughs> meeting of November 24th, 2020. Motion. Second. Romano and Walker. <laughs> Freeholder Cedeno? Yes. Freeholder O'Day? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Romano? Yes. Torres? Yes. Freeholder Walker is now. Walker. Yes. yes. And Chairman Veneri. Yes. Next order of business of discussion on today's agenda is a replacement of the administration that was emailed to you later this afternoon. Mr. Administrator. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have one, one additional item. We are recommending that we do a three-month extension. 
excuse me one second, with the uh, family partners of Hudson County uh, so that we can continue the family advocate and community empowerment program. We did an RFP on this, but uh, the one of the, the only response that we got to it that we received from it uh, was non-responsive. So we have to issue the RFP again. So we're asking for a three month extension so that we don't have an interruption in the service. Motion. Rodriguez Rodriguez Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Was the only responder the current provider? Uh, you know something? Uh, Doris, uh, uh, Al, can you uh, unmute yes. uh, Director Toon, please? Good afternoon, freeholders. Um, freeholder Day, yes. Uh, that the current provider was the only responder to the RFP. So they were the only responder, but they were non responded Yes, because they did not um, address critical information and they poured very long. So my question becomes, if they left critical information out and they're our current provider and they scored very low, what other options are, are you going to look at? Frielda, I think they just missed um, responding to a particular category in the RFP. So this will provide them and anybody else, any other entity that's interested in applying for this particular category to respond. So you say that their low score is not um, indicative of the performance that you've seen as the director that oversees the program? That's correct, Freeholder. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Minister, anything else? That's the only new item that I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll proceed with the first on agenda items. According to the policy set by the Board of Freeholder members of the public are asked to limit their comments to five minutes of discussing agenda items and five minutes of conclusion of the meeting with matters of public interest. At this time, the public may address the board on any item on the agenda only. Please keep your comments and limited to five minutes. Please use the raise your hand icon. Uh, there was Ms. Stephanie that wants to speak on number 18. And I do not see her. Here she is. Uh, Ms. Simon, you're self muted. Okay. Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Go ahead. You're yeah. on. Go yes. Ahead. Junior, I'm just going ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Good afternoon. And, and I first want to thank the freeholders for the opportunity for my to, for, for my to speak. I, I really do appreciate this. Um, I'm here to speak about uh, the request for additional funding um, for Bridgeway's Hudson County Telehealth Outpatient Counseling Services. Um, the reason that we're making this request um, I and mean, this is for people that have been directly you know, impacted by COVID. Um, there are several things that we've observed since this funding started in August. One of them is that the level of acuity for the individuals that we've been treating is definitely much higher than we had anticipated. So people have experienced you know, very significant things such as death of a loved one, loss of a job, a real exacerbation in mental health symptoms and trauma. Um, so this resulted in people receiving services with us for longer periods of, of time, and it really is not clinically advisable to discharge them. Additionally, our outpatient system of care, in terms of being able to discharge people, um, is extremely backlogged. This is not a new thing. This has been going on since way before COVID. Um, so there is not, there are not a lot of good options in this county to discharge people to um, where they're going to get quick follow-up appointments. Um, and, and these are people who need services. 
And then the last thing I noticed, um, which, which is something, you know, we, we could have anticipated is that many people that come to the service, if you lost your job, you lost your insurance. And so they don't have insurance. So, so we're basically having to um, absorb those costs. Um, and the costs are definitely higher than we had anticipated um, for all the reasons that, I, that I've mentioned. So that is the reason for the request um, that, that we are making today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, Mr. Are there Mr. No, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Since the yes. speaker, how many uh, individuals are you currently serving under this um, funding that you receive? So, so, so our, our commitment in our contract was to have 352 clients um, served, unduplicated, between August 1st and July 31st of 2021. We have, at this point, at this moment, we are serving 30 clients. Um, we have not had... Um, again, for the reasons I mentioned, people are staying in duration of services longer. So what that does, it is it impacts our ability to take in um, more individuals quickly. We're taking them in, but because people are with us for services, it makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, we have also um, invested um, in some marketing, uh, and currently there is a commercial running with Comcast where all Hudson County residents um, who receive their news on their digital devices will be getting information about this program. That started December 16th, and it will be going for three months. Um, we really want to get the word out and make sure everybody knows about these services. So, I hope so, that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. So in a program that's four months in hmm? you're, and you're supposed to service 352, right. you currently are serving a little less than 10%. How many, how many of those are um, individuals that don't have any medical coverage currently? We, we have um, probably f only like 40% of our caseload at any given time is covered by insurance. And the other thing is, let me just clarify something. 30 is what we have now. We've had more referrals since we began because a couple oh. of individuals um, did, were, were, were lost to contact, meaning they did not follow up. But we've lowered our level of service expectations as well. We are, we, you know, we, we are speaking with the county about also reducing it because the level of acuity is much higher and the people covered by insurance much lower. So are you going to look to lower the number of people that you'll serve under this grant because of the high acuity level that you're asserting? Correct. Right. Correct. So we, we, we have to do that um, in order to be able to accommodate the higher level of acuity. And again, this is also tied into the fact that there is no place else in the county to send people um, where they can right. be seen in anything approximating a reasonable time frame. All right. All right. So I get it. So you want us to give you additional funds and you're going to service less people than you anticipate. I got it. Okay, thank you. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Correct, correct. And we're going to, you know, get staffing to accommodate that. Thank right, you. correct. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Next person. Uh, the next person is Katya. Thank your full name. I don't even know what she spoke. <laughs> hey. Yes? No, nothing. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Go ahead, man. Uh, okay, I was once again, um, I've been calling into county meetings. Oh, my name is Katya Oltman. Okay, yeah, I was just, um, I've been calling into county meetings a lot, and I'm going to keep calling in. Is this about um, a, on the agenda, ma'am? Yes, it is. Go I was ahead. disappointed to see the thousands of dollars again being appropriated to the prosecutor's office and to okay. the sheriff's department. Good. Okay. Um, I'm against appropriations for the baggage scanners, the vehicle mounting equipment, the industrial drone platform and accessories, okay. and the new signs and promotional items um, for the sheriffs. Again, this is a public health crisis, and we shouldn't be spending so much money for the yeah. prosecutor's office and the sheriff's office. You've Thank you. It. Next, anyone else? Uh, there is uh, one more person. Um, 
Next person is uh, Freeholder Safeli, who's now present. Holder, do you wish to be recognized on the minutes? And if so, how do you vote? Yes, I am the minutes. Thank you. Next speaker is Stephen Campos. Hello. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, Steve. Okay, great. Hey, everyone. I was calling today on the human services uh, agenda items for the funding coming from uh, juvenile justice uh, programming. Um, I am a member of the Youth Service Commission. Um, I'm also a member of the review committee for the Youth Service Commission. Um, the Youth Service Commission um, is responsible for the monitoring and the oversight of multiple funding streams related to juvenile justice involved kids in Hudson County. Um, some of the related programs that you guys might be familiar with involve the electronic monitoring program, the bracelet, a transportation program to get uh, kids from their court appearances and the detention center to needed appointments, um, drug abuse treatment, um, you know, um, specialized uh, treatment for sex offenders. I, you know, I can go on and on, but that is, you know, a big bulk of the services that are focused. Um, throughout the year, we spend time reviewing uh, reports from all these programs and we vote on, on any adjustments um, that's going on with that programming. With that, as a member, we just went through our RFP process um, to, for all the programming, for many of the programming lines. Uh, what we decided as a, as a youth service commission was to move in a direction to offer more services to the specialized populations that we see in Hudson County. So through my experience with the Hudson Partnership, we've been offering this level of mentoring, which is very involved. Um, it's, you know, these are the kids that are involved in, in drugs in the streets. They have multiple issues with schools. They have issues of trauma in the home. So the YSC figured, let's move in another direction where we offer mentoring for this specific class of, of, of kids and youth in Hudson County that are really high risk. Put the RFP process out there. And, um, and we scored appropriately following all the measures and the protocols put in place. And Guasabara Insights was the, the high scoring provider um, that we're putting forward for recommendation for funding. Um, the previous program, Big Brothers Big Sisters, that was offering mentoring under a different description. And I wanna emphasize that, and that's why I really wanted to speak to, to, um, to you all today was, it was different deliverables and expectations before. And so it says nothing against Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And the reason I'm putting this out, because I know I was made aware that they sent a letter contesting the decision. And, um, and I wanted to really educate everyone that everyone, this wasn't a vote against Big Brothers, Big Sisters. They're an amazing organization. And I feel wholeheartedly that we should get more funding to make sure that all kids have Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And if that's a conversation that needs to happen, I'd be happy to work with the county and Big Brothers to advocate to that end. But this RFP that was selected and that was scored high and that was awarded, they met the criteria and they completed the requirements uh, to offer the specialized mentoring that was RFP'd. Um, and, and so I'm calling to really advocate that that be funded, that the process continues so we can start the new year with an exciting new direction that's gonna service the kids that really need this service in the juvenile justice system. Um, we also have a pilot program that's gonna be launching with the Jersey City Police Department to help them with more resources for station house adjustments. So if you guys follow the direction I'm going in, we're really creating a continuum of care that supports the kids in the system. Um, I, don't, you know, I don't think that we should go into a direction of fighting for scraps and for resources. I think um, for what we learned through COVID funding, there's a, uh, if we can find more funding for all types of programs, I think that we should do that. I think we should work together on that. I think that all these funding lines that the Youth Service Commission and the Reese Tunes Department oversees are doing tremendous work. And I think that we should fund all of them more. I mean, from my estimation of what I've seen with all these programs, we should have an additional million dollars to uh, divide between all these funding lines. And that would include primary prevention for big brothers, big sisters for the mentoring that they offer. Um, they're a tremendous org, but, um, but we, we decided the direction to go in. Um, we voted on it as a member board. We had our YSC meeting on Thursday, 16 members voted to, um, for all the recommendations that were put forward. And I'm just um, advocating for the freeholders. And I know you guys will be going to commissioners um, from 2021. Um, I'm just um, encouraging for us to follow, uh, follow through with these recommendations. 
And if we need to double back and figure out how to support big brothers, um, I'm all for that as well. But I, I like to keep um, and suggest that that all stay separate. Hey, Chair. Hey, I have a question for Steve. We're walking. Yeah. Ahead. Yeah, hey Steve, um, how you doing, man? Jerry Walker. Hey man, how's, how's it going, Jerry? Good, good. I, I'm just curious. I, I, you know, I often do these grants, and 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 they always say as a panel of people that evaluate them. Is it is it a chart that you guys use, or like what's the process yeah. with that? You, you, you read it, or like how, what what's, what goes on with that? So so we're given um a, a sheet, a form that breaks down into categories, each weighted at different points. So, um, you know, so you'll have something like fiscal report, uh, 15 points, um, program description, 20 points, um, staffing, you know, you know, and so on. So we're given that whole format. We, we, we go through the proposals and we score accordingly. And um, yeah, that's the process. Okay. So, so you have like a chart that says different line items that you score the chart. So is it, is it, so what I'm trying to understand is like, is it, is it a, is it a method to this stuff? Because I, you know, me from the nonprofit side, I always have like, you know, like the 21st century grant. It's like people that evaluate the grant. I always try to figure out how they do it. Um, so I, I can't explain it to me, but I know everything is different, but I just wanted to know that process. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, that's exactly it. To the chair. I'm so Joe showing you inside information. Brother Walker, are you okay? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Bill Torres, go ahead. Yeah, just the freeholder Walker's point. In the in the back of documentation that we were uh, that we were provided, there's a rubric for the RFP, and the rubric shows a breakdown of each section that was scored uh, for this RFP and for the additional RFPs that were in the in the particular resolution. So that that RFP is what's what the grant makers or the or the organizations would follow to apply for the particular funding categories that were provided to us. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Chairman. The other day. Um, yeah, Steve, Steve referenced the reports that the commission gets ongoing from the various providers. Uh, Mr. Administrator, I think that we should get copies of those reports also. Ultimately, we, we, um, we have to vote to appropriate the money as recommended by the commission. And it's as critical that we know what's going on uh, as that they know what's going on. Yeah. And I also echo, I also echo the fact that we need, we need additional funding. Um, we shouldn't have to replace one good program with another good program. We should be able to fund all the good programs to address the variety of needs uh, that individuals in the system have. So I don't know how we do that, but I, I will be looking in the budget process to see how we can identify those additional funds. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Clark. There are no additional speakers, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, the consent agenda now includes item 56, Matt. <laughs> Approve all items listed on the consent agenda. Motion. Second. Neri and Romano. On the consent agenda, freeholders to Daniel. Yes. Yeah. Cefali? Yeah. Freeholders to You're, you're muted. said yes. Sorry, I'm muted. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Yes. I heard him. I heard him. On the roll, freeholders to Feli. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. For Elder O'Day. I'm going to abstain on 22, and I'm going to abstain on 18 after what I heard from the speaker. I, I, I think we need to fully understand it. I don't know if they have more, if they need more money, but um, I was enlightened by what the speaker said, but it, it raised questions in my mind that we probably need a committee meeting to address. I vote aye on the rest. Elder Rodriguez. Yes. Romano? Yes. Torres? Yes. Walker? Yes. Chairman Veneri? Yes. On all. Thank you. We have no, no introduction and no ordinance to the second reading. That concludes the items of business on today's agenda. Are there any <laughs> business of the board? Any free others have any business to the board? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. 
Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, two, two, two quick items. One is um, just to follow up on 18. I would like uh, either at the next caucus or through the appropriate committee to kind of have a better discussion of this. It, it kind of caught me off guard that without any real explanation, thank goodness the provider got on the phone. We have a service here that is much different than I guess what was originally contemplated, meaning that they're serving a lot less individuals, but that those individuals are needing a much greater level of service. And I, and, and even though they're servicing less, they're going to need more, they're needing more money to do it. So I think that something as significant as that needs a, a serious discussion as well as whether this is a long-term program that is going to have to, go far beyond the uh, end of the COVID-19 pandemic. My other is, is Director Edwards on the line? Hey. Director Edwards. Very older. Director, go ahead. Yeah, Director, Director Edwards, I, I, I spoke to you, I believe it was yesterday, just concerning a, an issue that was brought to my attention about an alleged incident that may have occurred at the facility on, on or around the month of May that resulted in a, a correction officer being disciplined or suspended involving a detainee. Have you researched that issue since I spoke to you? Yes, Freeholder. I'm still unaware of any uh, of the person or persons you're talking about. All right, so, so to the best of your knowledge, there was no a uh, complaint filed about like whatever you call excessive force against someone, uh, a CO involving a detainee where in fact, the result of it was some disciplinary action being taken against the CO involved. Correct freeholder. I'm unaware. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other freeholders? Yeah. For, uh, uh, Romano, get you. Yeah. Just two things uh, in regard to uh, our last meeting. Um, I had a conversation with the last speaker, uh, Mr. Elijah, and uh, it was a good conversation. The fact that he uh, had, uh, misunderstood or was attributing comments to me that weren't from me. And I wanted to thank him for that and for um, admitting that. And for the second person, to the chair of the Hoboken Democratic Party for rebuking a uh, com Hoboken committee person who also said a false statement. And on the last comment, um, there was a gentleman, a committee person from Jersey City, downtown, that made asper uh, aspersions against myself, Freeholders Walker, and Copaz with regards to uh, donations. And um, uh, we just want to make him aware that contributions are done legally through the ELEC system, which um, we have to do reports on. But for him to just pick out some of the freeholders when other freeholders also get uh, contributions, I think was uh, very, uh, uh, you know, wrong on his part. So I just wanted to uh, state those comments. Thank you very much for your. Are there any comments from the deputy chief of staff to the county executive? I'd just like to uh, wish everybody a happy and healthy holiday, and uh, hopefully with the uh, new uh, vaccines coming out, 2021 can be a lot better than we've experienced here in 2020. So that goes for all the board, all the county employees, and for all those who are on the fall today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, public question. This is the time for anyone present to address the board for a matter of public comments. Please remember you to limit speak? your comments to five minutes. From the chamber, I have one card, Renee Myers. And uh, via Zoom, I have two raised hands. Ms. Meyer? Go ahead, Renee. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Renee Myers. Well, no, you, could take, you could take your thing down while you're speaking. Take it off. Easy. Hi, my name is Renee Myers. I work for the county of Hudson for 20 years in the maintenance department. And I experienced the situation on 11-16-2020. Um, um, I know you are aware of many cases that we have in the Hudson County Plaza. 
I have a doctor note and I also made a, a placket for you all, but unfortunately you're not here to read it. I did get a freeholder bill on day one. You can give the, uh, clerk a one, the clerk will get it to us. A freeholder won't get it to us. If you give it to the clerk, the freeholders will get it. Don't hand it to okay. a freeholder. I'll make sure. I'll make sure. I'll make sure. Okay, that, he had his own. I have you guys one. Uh, we'll make sure okay. Al Santos gets one. He'll email it to everyone else. Yes, okay. This you. is this is my doctor note from my doctor. I have like three underlying problems, and I know no one can afford to get the cover, but myself, I don't know how it would act on me because I have three serious underlying problems. So on this day, the 16th, I had already cleaned my floor, which is the sixth floor. And after I cleaned it, everyone from the back started leaving with their pocketbooks and they pull carts and everything going to the cafeteria. So I said, what's going on? This is scary. They're going to the cafeteria because it was many cases on my floor. Now here come my sister's supervisor and he's frog in the bathroom after I cleaned it. And I asked him, I said, Willie, wouldn't it make sense for you to let the housekeepers know, do not go into those bathrooms yet until you fog them when you find out it's many cases on that on their floor. You don't have to tell the gender. You don't have to tell no names because I know it's a HIPAA <clears throat> law. So anyway, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to call my union. Okay. So now they go tell John Kelly. Now here come Kelly upstairs. It was a lady with my supervisor, which wasn't spraying anything at all. John Kelly had Pauline <laughs> Forrest, his um, clerk, take her up to my supervisor's office, my director's office, and said I was screaming and hollering in her face. I said, really? What was I supposed to say to her? Oh, don't spray that stuff. Oh, this lady was never spraying anything. It was my sister's supervisor spraying it. I said, Kelly, so the housekeeper lives don't matter. If someone come in there and they have the COVID-19, it's in their body fluids. They cough in, they urinate, and they do whatever they have to do in the bathroom. It's not fair. It's like we're on the front line to tell us, don't go in yet. Let us frog it, and then you, we'll come in and we'll detail the bathroom. And I do a very good job. And I have many, many letters to show my work for not just uh, now. For the last 20 years, I have been working for the county. I go above and beyond. You could Google Hustle County Welfare and you hit the desk. That's all my work. OK, I go above and beyond to do. But you're not going to harass me. You're not going to walk around here and tell lies on me, John Kelly. Enough is enough. I'm concerned you may, I, my life may not matter to you, but my life matter. And that's all I'm asking him. Just let us know when it's cases up there. Don't go in the bathroom yet. Let us frog them. Then you go in and detail them. I think that makes sense. But he said he don't have time for all of that. And he's harassing me and I want him to stop it already. That's all I have to say. And I will make sure I leave the letters of my work. Thank I do my much. work. I'm not a troublemaker. I want him to stop. All right, Renee, thank you. We, and we, 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 when we have our next public resources committee, we'll, and I'll reach out before that to Denise and Ralph Sachs and, and see if they could have a conversation to resolve it informally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the chamber? Anyone no, else? Mr. Clark. No, no one in the chambers. I have four raised hand on raised hands on Zoom. The first is Annette Tamarazzo. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thank you. For, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tony Tamarazzo, I'm a resident of Hoboken, and I'm also a member of the Hoboken Community Center Board that's been running the Hoboken Food Pantry. And I, I wanted to attend for the second time this year to thank the freeholders and particularly freeholder Romano for the assistance that we've received from the county in order to provide the services that we've been able to give to the neediest members of our Hoboken community. In March of this year, the Hoboken Community Center reacted to the pending COVID crisis and opened a food pantry that began serving just 60 residents of our city and expanded quickly to meet the evolving demand. Today, we're serving 450 Hoboken households twice a month. 
and it's through uh, services that the county provokes towards us in assisting us in picking up large amounts of donations that we're fortunate to receive from the Community Food Bank of New Jersey in Hillside. And individuals at the county who have been especially helpful are uh, Ms. Del Asandro, Director Toon, Brian Poffel, and Nicole Harrison Garcia. I, I don't mean to leave anyone out if there are others. I know it's a teamwork and the men that help us consistently come uh, twice a month to bring this food, but we would be unable to perform this service without this assistance. And I wanted to rise today, Mr. Chairman, just to thank you and make sure that you understood that in the last nine months, we have served 9,000 bags of groceries and meals to the neediest residents in Hoboken. And the freeholders contribution has made it possible. So I, I hopefully, uh, you'll be uh, amenable to continuing the assistance in 2021 as the demand continues to grow, unfortunately. And we just appreciate uh, that help. Um, you know, we've done this entirely through private donations. We have not received any financial support from the county. Um, and I understand that unfortunately we missed the CARES Act round. And we hope that next year, if any funds become available, that Freeholder Romano will continue to be our guardian and assist us in helping apply for any assistance that might become available. It's a very expensive proposition to serve all of these people and uh, all of the help uh, that we can get again is, is needed. So thank you, uh, Chairman and Freeholders. Uh, please note that when you put your head on your pillow tonight, you've done a great thing for, for lots of people who need it in Hoboken. And um, on behalf of our board, we wanted to thank you. And best wishes for a happy holiday, everyone. Thank you, Nero. Thank, thank you very much for the kind words and appreciate it. I look forward to work with Freeholder Romano again the next year to do this. Freeholder Romano. Mr. Chair, yeah, I just want to comment. Tony has been there since day one uh, back in, in March, organizing uh, the meetings to get uh, uh, people to do certain things. And uh, Tony, appreciate that. And uh, we will be on top of it as soon as any new funding comes available. Uh, we're definitely going to apply uh, working with the city administration on that. And please uh, let me know about the toys. We still have them when you have that list. OK, I have. Them. Thank you. And uh, Merry Christmas. Next speaker is Katya Altman. Uh, hello, my name is Katya Altman. Is my time going to start? Yeah, yes. you are. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm um, I know that because of the time of this meeting, it's again the afternoon meetings right before Christmas, there aren't a lot of speakers, but I want to remind you that this doesn't mean that the calls to abolish the ICE contract uh, will go away. There were two big protests in Bergen County over this weekend, and there was one more in Newark. Um, I was also encouraged to see legislation in the New Jersey legislature calling for the end of all local um, New Jersey contracts <laughs> with ICE. Um, so yeah, I just want to remind you that these kind of protests will continue. And uh, yeah, we're not going to stop until we get justice. Thank you. I yield the rain to run my time. Thank you. Speaker is Whitney Strew. I hope they don't continue the way they did in Bergen County and Hackensack. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. Anyone else? Yes, Whitney Strew. Uh, Hi, Freeholders. Uh, Whitney Strube here with North Jersey DSA, the Democratic Socialists of America. And I also teach history at Rutgers Newark. Um, and because I'm <clears throat> positioned at that intersection of activism and doing scholarly history work, I was able to co-author um, an article this week for the Washington Post. I just wanted to make sure you were aware that the Hudson County ICE contract is national news. I mean, it's something that I'm sure you're aware was denounced by Julian Castro the night you um, you know, overrode the public will to renew it, um, and that the Washington Post saw fit to publish this piece uh, linking the ICE contract to the history of machine politics in New Jersey, and particularly Boss Hag's notorious machine of the 1930s. Uh, because sure, that. the argument that my co author Mary Rizzo and I make is simply that there's a continuous disregard for democracy here that I think is very abundantly <laughs> on display in Hudson County and in the renewal of the contract. And so, 
like like Katya Oldman just said, I want to continue objecting to the ICE contract. I think it's important that you, you know, like Katya said, be aware that there's not a lot of turnout today, but that this movement is going everywhere, and these objections are going to remain here, and there will be on the ground activism. I can promise you that. Um, but with the remaining time I have, I, I did want to follow up on the issues I had raised last time, again, pertaining to the investigation of claims of abuse by members of the Queer Detainee Empowerment Project. I believe that's what you just had Director um, Edwards speaking about a few minutes ago, but I, I just want to clarify again, last time I spoke at the Freeholders meeting, I asked about the nature of the investigation in 2018, um, when Paul Gonzalez claimed, quote, I was raped. Uh, and he had recorded that. I can wait while Romano talks if you prefer. Anyway, um, continuing on. Um, yeah, I'd just like to know if there's any update on that investigation from 2018, particularly what the content of that investigation looks like, um, and, and then what the plan is now, whether that comment from Director Edwards is the end of an investigation or the beginning of an investigation for the claims you heard on November 24th. I'm sorry? Yeah. 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 yeah um, wasn't it? Uh, I remember that comment, and wasn't it on your on your motion or your application? Wasn't it going to be that the minutes of that meeting where those allegations were set forth on the record? Those minutes were going to be forwarded by our office to the Hudson County Prosecutor. Wasn't is that my recollection correct? Yeah, that's what I asked for. I don't know if I. But I don't know if that occurred yet. I don't know whether that happened yet. I, I, mean, I it's think kind that, of falls to the clerk. That calls falls to the clerk after the meeting. But I just don't want the speaker to think that it, Lord, we I think board we the way we had left it was that those minutes were going to be transcribed and sent to the public for investigation or comment. Or to, or to, yeah, or to respond to, yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. So, okay. Yeah, thank is, you. There, is there any kind of concrete timeline for that? I, I just want to make sure this doesn't disappear into a bureaucratic procedural abyss. I'd, I'd like some marker of uh, accountability that can be followed up on. So can we, have we sent the minutes yet? Have you had? For, for, for the record, is it when the allegation was originally made at the uh, meeting that was held in the jury assembly room or is this a subsequent allegation? No, we, the, we, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. My, my understanding was this was the allegation raised in, in, uh, in on the November 24th meeting, um, again, as well as the earlier allegations from 2018, the investigation of which I've never had clarified to me. Uh, is it the same? It's the same episode, though. So I think that's what. Yes. I no, no, these are two. These are two separate episodes. Oh. One from 2018. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The one. Just trying to so Mr. The Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, ahead, the yeah. prosecutor's office investigated that one and it was found to be unfounded. Thank you. But that sir. was the 2018 one. Yes. Right, there was another one how alleged of the meeting on the 24th. How much time on the clock for the speaker? One minute's left. We've got one minute no. left. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. So I, can, if I may use my time. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to interrupt Mr. Albert. Add this to his time. I just want a clarification. I'm confused as to whether there are two incidents or one. As I understand the last comments, the one that was made on the record in 2018 may have been investigated and it, 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 it came away with no uh, cause for indictment or anything else. I don't know. But is the speaker saying that there's a new allegation that he related to us through secondhand? Yes. That's fine. That was more recent. That's the one. Yes. That their own day we're talking about. So I just want to clarification. That's all. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And the one thing I wanted to add to that is uh, in regard to the 2018 allegation, my specific question, is, what was the nature of the investigation? Because with all due respect, I'm not actually convinced that a serious investigation took place. I'd like to know what that consisted of, whether that was one phone call or a serious investigation. All the prosecutor's uh, office. I, I did, sir. Office. I did. And I Oprah'd it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hold on, hold on. Don Batista raised his hand. Is at the podium, Mr. Chairman. Let the guy he finish his time so he can get off. Okay. Sir, are you done? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I, I guess I'm still waiting for any concrete response to anything. Is your time up, Mr. Santos? 
Well, uh, the, sure. the, his five minutes are up. I don't know if you want to credit any time. No, but time is up. Mr. Batista, you have a comment? Wait, wait, I, I, wait hold on. I just have one question for him. Mr. Batista. What was the name of the article? No, I want to ask the speaker one question. What was the name oh, of the article oh, in the Washington oh, Post? He's off. Oh, sure. Oh. Um, the, the title we turned in was Boss Hag's Ghost Still Haunts New Jersey. The title they ran with was New Jersey's Unique Political Contours Make Challenging Immigrant Detention Hard, which was not our chosen title. Thank you. Time is up, Mr. Santos. Okay. Yep. Mr. In, in 2018, when the allegation was made, I referred the matter to the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office. The prosecutor's office, to my understanding, and they could speak for themselves as to the depth and the nature of their investigation. They conducted an investigation and concluded that no further action was going to be taken. Again, I believe the speaker has ser had served an OPA request. That information was conveyed to him. Unfortunately, the what the speaker feels he's entitled to under New Jersey law is not what he's entitled to. However, that the investigation was conducted by the prosecutor's office and we were advised that there was a decision made not to take any further action. Anything beyond that, I will defer to the prosecutor's office. As to the most recent allegations, uh, I've not been given any information, from, at least from my office, that we could conduct or refer to either the prosecutor's office or outside counsel an investigation. If someone could give me a name, a date, or facts, I we certainly will make certain that that's passed along to the appropriate agency to review whatever needs to be reviewed. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, uh, please announce uh, how many speakers left? Uh, I have six raised hands. Anybody uh, other than, I uh, want to speak on any other topic other than ICE? I, the names appear to be, uh, at least in the past, in connection with ICE. OK, thank you very much. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Next speaker is Mark Devins. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so I would, I had an original opening uh, to my comments, but I would first like to address uh, Chair Veneri's profound disrespect for the public by just, you know, leaving this meeting um, and refusing to hear what six people had to say. He couldn't stick around for a half hour more. Um, and yeah, that is just really disgusting behavior from a public official. Um, yeah, just kind of shocking. Um, I would like to thank um, Freeholder Torres. Uh, you know, it's my understanding that it is his last meeting today. Um, I really appreciate his commitment and his uh, service to the board. Um, I. I was so shocked by Chair Veneri's departure that I didn't introduce myself. My name is Mark Devins. Uh, I am in District 4, so Freeholder Torres is my uh, freeholder. Uh, he has been responsive and helpful when I've had questions for him in the past, and I, I have especially appreciated his commitment to uh, ending the ICE contract, uh, and I, I really hope that his replacement on the board holds similar views and is similarly accountable and responsive. Uh, the only other question that I have for today is the same question that I asked two weeks ago and uh, you know, another question that came up in the meeting a month ago. Uh, with regards to the ICE contract, has any financial analysis been uh, prepared or released by the county? <laughs> Mr. Administrator, so no financial analysis has been, so I guess the question was last time, two years ago, a financial analysis was done before, and this time there wasn't, right? Okay, so, so, so Mark, there was, the no financial analysis has been done um, at this time, though it was done two years ago. Okay, so this was renewed for 10 years. Are there any plans? to do another financial analysis, whether that be now or in a year or two years or five years from now, or is this contract just planning on existing for 10 years with, with no understanding of its financial impact on our county? Well, I, I would just say as only one member of the board that when we get to the budget next year, which will probably be in the late spring, generally it would be appropriate as part of the budget process to request and require that that study be done since it's 
determinant on how one may vote on the budget. So um, at a minimum, I would say that from my perspective, I will request that an analysis be done uh, as part of next year's budget process. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I could chime in on that. Uh, I, uh, I understand. Um, and I, I await a, a, a financial analysis of it going forward. But I think what you know, we need to, you know, I go back from 30,000 feet above and I look down at this situation. And I know I've been criticized for this, but I'll, I'll I think this problem is really a federal problem. And I think our senators, I say that with all sincerity, are good senators, uh, Senator Menendez and Senator Booker should contact us immediately and tell us what plans they have for the Biden administration to um, reorganize and readjust detention policy, because I think we go a long way. We can make all the plans we want, but the decisions come above us. And I want, I want to hear from our senators who were very convenient to throw us under the bus in the newspaper a few weeks ago. I want them to tell us what they're going to do with President Biden in order to uh, extricate us from this dilemma. So to, to answer Mr. Devin's question, I, I don't know what the financial forecast is. I, I think we'll to see what uh, the new president, uh, Joe Biden, will do and what our New Jersey senators are going to do in order to extricate all of us from this dilemma. Yeah, so I, I first of all object to that framing because you know your responsibility as a member of the board was to, to vote. But that's the truth. All right, Al, could you let him finish? He has his five minutes. Sure. You know, your responsibility was to vote in the interest of our county. And I, I understand that you made other arguments in your vote. I, you know, paid close attention, but the financial argument was there, whether that was yours or on the part of others or the part, you know, that was the driving argument of the executive. And we have no financial understanding of this contract. And that's not the responsibility of the, the federal government. That is the responsibility of our, our county. Um, and, but, but let's take your argument at face value. Did you see the, the statements from the, the Biden administration today that, uh, you know, Susan Rice had said that there are really no plans to make any immediate changes to immigration policy. Um, migrants and asylum seekers absolutely should not believe that the border will suddenly be fully open to process everyone. It will not. That was a quote from Susan Rice today. Hi, Mr. Chair. Oh my God, Susan Rice said that? Oh my God, and she should be condemned as, well, as, as all of us have been condemned. Six people have voted. God forbid Susan Rice said that. Uh, Mr. Right. Mrs. Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark, to, just a point, uh, two, two points. Mr. Administrator, you know, the speaker does have a valid point. We, after the Senate, the two senators, in essence, threw, threw the board uh, under the bus, so to speak, it was raised that they never did anything to help us. And I raised a question to you, when did we ask them? Your answer was, until a day ago, I don't think we ever asked them. So I think in fairness to Senators Menendez and Booker, we had two years to reach out to them to tell them, listen, we have this contract. We've committed to want to get out of this contract. It creates a financial burden on the county. Can you help us? We never did that. So for us to now complain that they, quote, unquote, threw us under the bus when we, it's not their obligation to read our minds and figure out what we need. We don't have problems reaching out to them when we have other needs, but we didn't. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't. We didn't speak to them. We didn't send a letter to them. We didn't meet with their staff. And there are other ways they could help us in some of my conversations that I've had with the administrator. And if, if we're sincere about this, then we as a county should be, reaching out and asking them to meet with us and follow up with it. I know there was one conversation that, that I believe occurred where the county exec made a mention to Senator Menendez of a way they could help. That should be followed up. That should be followed up on. But to make that more fruitful, 
Mr. Administrator, I think you should do a fiscal analysis because if we're going to ask someone to help us, do they need to help us to a degree of $5 million a year, $10 million a year? I don't know. I know it's not $20 million any, anymore because I can look at how many individuals are at the facility that were detainees two years ago or three years ago and how many of them are there today, and I can figure that it's, it's 25 30% of what it was before. But the, the speaker brings up a good point. We should know. Whether we know now or whether we know at the budget, you know, I think it's better to know now so we can have discussions to see who else can be able to be out there to assist us. Maybe it's the senators. Maybe it's Governor Murphy. Both the federal government and the state government have options or opportunities to provide us assistance within the correctional area that could make it – look, I voted against the contract, but – could make it resolve the financial issue of it. And then if the financial issue goes away and the majority still vote for well, then you just got to figure out why that is. Well, well with, all, with all due respect to, to Fielder O'Day, uh, and, and, and Fielder O'Day and I have had private conversations about this, but I totally understand his comment. Uh, however, my vote was not predicated upon the uh, revenue stream my, my, I've articulated my reasons in, in past meetings. So I'm not going to go off that. Uh, I'm not going to go through that again. But the comments about Senator Menendez and Senator Booker waiting for us to get back to them, uh, I find uh, somewhat uh, not to feel their day, but, but I'll, I'll impute insincerity to them, to the senators, because when they come to us for for support, they're not shy with their calls. And so I just feel offended by the fact that they threw us under the bus. And I will repeat that. And if you want to quote me in the newspaper and they want to call me, I'll be happy to talk to them. But I'm sorry, Mr. Devins, to, to get off on a sidetrack because you have a very good point. And uh, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't want to take your time. I'm sorry. Next speaker is hold on, hold on. One, 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 one last comment. I think I think that always got to go last. One would, always got to go last. One would, that's all right. We could go. We could go back if I got nothing to do today. We could. What, one one last point is the fact. If I was Senator Menendez and Senator Booker, to find out that a matter as critical as this got on our agenda with little or no pre-notice, with little or no discussion with any of the advocacy groups that occurred two years ago with no fiscal study, which occurred two years ago, I think that they might have an ability to be a little bit upset with the process that was followed this time that resulted in that item getting put on on a daytime meeting with three days notice before Thanksgiving holiday. You win, Billy, you got the last word and you win. All right. For the chair. Yes, so what? Free hold the Torres. You win. Just, uh, just uh, I know Mr. Devins had mentioned, I wasn't going to say much about it, but yes, it's my last meeting. It's been an honor of serving the residents of District 4 of Jersey City and Hudson County, and I'll be here, uh, thankfully, with a perfect attendance on this board until the very end. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is Elijah Stevens. Hi, um, I unfortunately got on after um, Romano made comments, which mentioned a conversation that we had. It seems like Freeholder um, Romano has now logged <laughs> off, so I can't address him directly. But um, he implied that um, in, that a conversation we had um, about false statements I supposedly made about his belief about what um, services undocumented people are deserving or undeserving of getting. Um, you know, I said that he, that Romano has implied and stated and acted on a belief that undocumented immigrants, including those held um, at the county jail, are not deserving of services like housing and healthcare and job programs. Um, and I, I would say I stand by that um, because 
actions speak louder than words. And I have yet to see him act in such a way that um, actually um, serves to provide those services and act in a way to um, make sure that uh, undocumented um, immigrants in, in these communities are actually provided with those services and that that is a fundamental right that all people deserve. Um, so uh, I would like to see action uh, taken um, instead of just hollow words. That's it, I see the rest of my time. Thank you. Mr. Next Mr. Speaker. Hold on, Mr. Cliff, do we still have five people? I, okay, go ahead. We do now. I didn't see Jerry. I lost Jerry. Uh, let me double check. Four, five. We have five. Uh, okay. Daniel Harari. Danielle Harari. Hello. Could you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I wanted to start off by, again, stating what I did last time. Um, I stated that it's just really funny to me that you guys have time for public comments, but then during the public comments, you hear your snarky responses in the background and just stupid comments or you guys laughing, throwing your glasses. It's all so pathetic. Um, it's pathetic as well as the fact that you guys decided to renew the ICE contract while knowing the inhumane conditions. Um, and Cefeli, when you said that it's for the Biden, we should wait for the Biden administration and see what they do. No, you should do your own research. You should, you all should do your own research. You should listen to what everyone's been saying to you and actually open your ears. Um, I just don't understand what like the laughs are for it's really not funny that people are in these inhumane conditions with rats um drinking toilet water like what's so what's so i don't get it also um why don't you guys answer half the questions that people ask huh there's been so many questions you just pass over. And I think like you guys should just take the time to realize that like, this is all you're being asked to do to listen to the people and to just do what they say, do what they want for a better community. Like you're not just sitting here for yourself. This isn't for yourself, this is for the people. So think about that when you make your decisions. It's not for yourself. Like, like, I can't even express like the shame you should feel when you go to bed knowing that you renewed this contract. How do you sleep at night? I yield my time. I can't even, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Next speaker is Stacy Gregg. Hi, Stacy Gregg from Rockaway. Um, I agree with the last speaker. You don't answer the questions. You're extremely rude. Um, you took advantage of a worldwide pandemic to push through a 10 year contract and shame, shame on you. Yeah. There's a nine person member of free, you know, freeholders soon to be called commissioners. Um, you don't deserve to be called commissioners because you are slave owners. You should forever be known as freeholders and not in a good way, but in the way that that name originally, originally came to be. You don't deserve to have a respectable title. Your families for generations will know what you've done and be embarrassed. Did any of you, did one of you that voted for this 10 year contract, apologize to the other freeholders, to, to um, Ms. Sedano, to Mr. Torres. Did you see how they looked at the end of that meeting? They were not happy. They were disgusted with the things you had to say and share, as was over, oh, close to 200 people and thousands of people that watched the live stream. And this is a national problem. All eyes are on Hudson. All eyes are on New Jersey. And I think 
you totally, totally took advantage of your county, yeah. of your donors' money. I don't think your donors know what you're doing, lying, blatant lies to the people in Hudson County, saying that you're going to end and phase out a contract within two years. I did not lift a finger. I want to thank the three that voted against this egregious, horrific contract. I, I really, I, I'm just from the bottom of my heart, I am so, you know, at least there's three human beings that are on that freeholder. I don't even know what to call you, you freeholders, you're slaveholders. You've heard the conditions over and over. You heard doctors, you heard experts, you heard people talk about how it affects the children. These people are separated from their children. And this is on you, and I hope your Christmas is not happy for those who voted for a 10-year contract of a rat-infested, horrific situation where there's a dollar amount on human beings' heads. No human being is illegal, and they deserve respect and love, and they deserve, people of your county deserve to have the um, promises kept. I don't, I don't know how you can sleep with yourselves at night. I agree with the last speaker. Shame on you. Just shame on you. And did you, did you apologize? Mr. Chair, you know, point, of, point of order, I only see four freeholders uh, participating in this meeting. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I don't think we have a quorum right now. Uh, we don't have a quorum. Jerry Walker, where'd you go? Speaks volumes. Shame on him. Shame on Jerry. He is a slave owner. Maybe so we, we, we have to suspend anything until we get a quorum, because we can't. Who's here? Billy, who's here? Me, you, Joel, and Fanny. Fanny. All right. So we need Jerry Walker or we need Romano right. back. Romano has uh, has another has a conflict. He sent a text. He's not available. Uh, okay. I'm trying to call Jerry on his cell phone. Speaker's time is just waiting for that. Sorry, Freel. Speaker's time. Great. Speaker had one minute left. Yes. Okay. Resume a quorum. I want to make sure the clock stopped on her. On her. Hello? Jerry, we need you. We don't have a quorum without you. We got three more speakers. There are six more speakers. Six. All right. So Freeholder Walker said he, he's not going to be able to get back on the call. So I Mr. Santos, I'll, I'll defer to, to board council as, as to- uh, So Mr. 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 Florian, what still do we do now? We no longer have a quorum. The, the uh, option really Freeholder is to entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, how can we take a vote on something without a quorum? It's not official business. It's it's the it is what is required under Robert's rules. Yeah. So so uh, Mr. Florio, uh, we have a nine member board. We have no majority right now. We have a uh, only four others present. If I understand what you're saying, is that kind of per se, it's got to be adjourned. That's correct, Freeholder. Do we need to? Do, do we meet? Do we need a formal application? Technically, no, because there's there's no there's no uh, body to conduct any business. Yeah, I know. That's so what the, I mean. Effectively, the meeting is over. That's what I mean. All right. I just wanted you to put it on the record. I get it. All right. I just it's, I just want to say it's it's sad that we lacked the quorum, so we couldn't even wish our colleague, who's no longer going to be on our board. Uh, kind words before he leaves. So I'll, I'll at least say that whether it's on the record or not. Uh, Joel, I appreciated your time on this board. Uh, you're a bright young man. Uh, you've got a good heart. You care about people. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, that works against you in life, uh, but don't change the way that you are. And, and I, I would like to, before we adjourn, so I can get my comments on the record, I, I would like to echo a bill of those comments to Joel. Um, your time with us has been too short. Uh, you, as Billy said, you are an extremely bright, insightful man. 
and I, I, uh, I commend you for the passion that you have for your constituents and, and for what you believe was when, when votes came. And I, I thank you for your participation. We've had conversations over the last few years that have, have amplified that. Um, we, we've not always agreed, as we know from the last half hour, we've not, we've not always agreed, but I've always respected your opinions and I've always listened to the, the basis for those opinions. And I thank you and I always will count you among people that I, I call friends. Thank you, Joel, and have a Merry Christmas, you and your family. Mr. Board Counsel, for the benefit of the written record of uh, transcribers, should I take a roll call? I'll say real quick, uh, Mr. Clerk, just thank you, uh, Friola Svelli, Friola Day, Friola Cedeno. Uh, just thank you very much. I, I truly appreciate the kind words you just stated, uh, but I, I appreciate our our time together. Our, we never always agreed on everything, but it was a pleasure, a true pleasure just to exchange insight, ideas, and learn from each other and grow from each other. So I truly appreciate that. I'm truly humbled. Uh, and like I said, I wasn't going to make a big deal about it, but yeah, it's been a great time over the past three years serving with, with you. And for you, Daniel, it's been a, a, a good time serving with you over this past year. It's unfortunate that I had to end in such a, a sloppy way, but so is the course for life. 2020. And Mr. Florio, uh, Clerk Santos, everyone else, uh, thank you so much for your time, your knowledge, your insight. I'll say once again, with all due respect to all of the directors, Director Toon, I worked with you most, and, and I have to say you are uh, one of the best directors that we have, not just in the county, not just in the state, but, but nationwide, uh, you and your entire staff, uh, and the entire staff that we have here in the county. So thank you so much. I truly appreciate your, your hard work and your efforts. Uh, Mr. Florio, can I take a roll call? Uh, that would be appropriate, Mr. Santos. Reholder Cedeno? Here. Cefali? Here. Copaz? Not present. O'Day? Here. Rodriguez? Not present. Romano? Not present. Torres? Here. Walker? Not present. Chairman Veneri? Not present. We only have four freeholders. Should there be a motion to adjourn or are we terminated, Mr. Florio? The meeting effectively is concluded for lack of a quorum. So no motion of, to adjourn is needed, right? It's not necessary. You can do it if you want to. Merry motion Christmas, to adjourn. everyone. Elder Torres, his last question. Motion. Is there a second? No. Second. Seconded by Cedena. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Merry I, vote no. I vote no to adjourn. <laughs> the record would show for you. No. All right. Meetings adjourned. Have a good holiday, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. Everyone. Happy Happy holidays. holidays. Thank you. Uh, who's ever left? Thank you. Yes, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. So we're adjourned, Dave. You can't, you can't say that on the record. <laughs> oh, let's leave. Uh, I just feel like Some of us uh, don't to believe in this way, but yeah. it is what it is. Thank you, uh, gentlemen and ladies.